you can share your screen. This meeting is being recorded. Thank you. I'll share my screen. Yarka, can you unmute yourself? Okay. There I am. Yes, great, thank you. I'll talk shortly on the provenance project at the Royal Danish Library. And I'll show a few examples of ownerships marks, preferably from our library's older collections. Now the background for the provenance project was the 1970s theft of books that we have at our library. So in 1979, uh, to 99, a complete revision of one of the collections that this thief uh, stole from uh, was started. And for the revision, some pre-printed protocols was made, as you can see an example of here. Uh, and during the, the revision, the materials were given a barcode and uh, the missing volumes were recorded. The physical conditions of the books was recorded and characteristics and so and so and so on. So the result was a list of missing books for replacement and of course a lot of book history data. In 1999 when the revision was finished, it had lasted for 20 years, the red lists were put aside and forgotten. Until 2010 where the former owner, uh, former leader of the manuscript department, Ivan Busrup, he made me uh, aware of the existence of these lists. And he suggested that the staff at the reading room began updating our catalog posts with this data without having to request the material from the closed stacks. So we started entering uh, owner's marks, notes on medieval fragments, binding information, all kinds of general notes, Sometimes there would be like a question mark and then we would have to request the material uh, and, and look it up ourselves, uh, perhaps photograph it and save it for later clarification. As you can see in the field over here to the right, I hope you can see my mouse, it says EJ uh, and next to it Zoom, EJ is in Danish Eiermerke, owner's mark and Zoom is the name, is a name. So when we've seen this in, in the, re, the vision protocol, we wouldn't have to request this, this uh, uh, item. We could just enter into the catalog post uh, that Zoom, the book collector PF Zoom, living in the 18th century, uh, had owned this, books, this book. And below that, we read sex standing for super ex libros or supra libros and the name Luxdorf and then the, uh, the cataloger would know that Luxdorf had had his Supra Libros on this binding and we wouldn't have to request the book, we could just enter this data into the catalog post. This is what it looked like in our former lending system, Elif. Uh, field 561 was used, this is the mark format, for the provenance and the exact description of what we saw. The 563 field was used for binding information. As we can read here, it was bound in, in red Marocain. The 565 field for notes, and then the 700 for former owner function code was implemented for entering the name of the former owner, which is in this case is Christian Gulden Löwe and the years where he, when he lived. In 2019, we changed our catalog system to ALMA and all these data were transferred to, to ALMA. And we discussed uh, whether we should keep on using the five, field 561 uh, or if it was the correct field uh, uh, because there could be several items attached to one uh, catalog post. But at the time, the holdings function in ALMA wasn't searchable. So uh, we didn't, uh, we kept on doing it in the old way. And we also asked some other uh, ALMA libraries what their procedure would be. 
This is a screenshot of the, the advanced search in, in the discovery that the, the users see. So when you have the 700 former owner field, it's possible to make a special search scope. And here I've searched for the last name, Güldenlöwe. You can also search for the search, uh, the first name and so. Um, and then this is what the user will see when he searches for Güldenlöwe in our discovery online catalog. The provenance field 561 is situated here on, in the bottom with the exact uh, 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 description of what we've seen. And the 563 field, the binding field is here in the middle. And then the former owner uh, 700 name is uh, placed here as Christian Güldenlöwe. And if you press this link, you can see all the other books that Christian Güldenlöwe has uh, owned in, in the Royal Danish Library. Now, apart from using the protocols, all the books that has been in the reading room and, and goes back to the stacks, perhaps not all, but most of them are also registered before going back. And uh, also we have a preparation project uh, for remote storage at the time uh, where additional provenance is, is uh, registered. So all in all, we have uh, over 40,000 entries with known provenances from the 700 fields that are searchable for our users. And then we have about 130,000 in field 561, which are descriptions, but of some of them, we're not quite sure of uh, yet. Now, I'll go on uh, showing a few examples of, of, of from the library. I've mentioned Christian Güldenlöwe a couple of times. Güldenlöwe was the name that the Danish kings gave their children outside of marriage, and there were quite a lot of them. So uh, at some time, we had some problem identifying this gilded lion here. We knew it had something to do with a, a Güldenlöwe, a gilded lion. Uh, and then the Danish art library came up with this uh, book that has a greeting in it to Sa uh, Haute Excellence, Monseigneur Christian Güldenlöwe from Weiberg. And because this gilded lion was on the cover of the book, then we suddenly knew that it had belonged to exactly this Güldenlöwe who died in 1703. The Gottorps owner's marks are quite common in our library, which has to do uh, with, uh, with some with histor historical reasons. Now, the Gottorp is a castle in, in northern Germany, in Slesvig. Uh, and uh, the dukes of Gottorp were descendants from the Danish king. So you can see here uh, the coats of arms of the Norwegian, uh, or you can see the, the crest of the Norwegian lion, which is because all these dukes uh, called themselves heirs to the Norwegian throne. Uh, and it's possible to see differences on the shields. For example, this one has a mitre and a cross for the Prince Bishop of Lübeck, which was Christian Albrecht, also a, um, a Duke of Gottorp. And the last one I've taken with is Karl Friedrich, and he was the Duke at Gottorp Castle when the Danish king in the 18th, beginning of the 18th century, took the castle and took the book collection and the manuscripts, and they were later brought on to Copenhagen. And uh, some of them, the Dublais, were also given out to other libraries, for example, to uh, Fredericks, the new Fredericks University Library in Christiania, that is Oslo. And a librarian at the, the Royal Danish Library, he, he wrote in some of the books, Ex Bibel Gotts. So, uh, apart from these indications here, which are very clear, it's also possible to see at the design of the books that they, that they actually come from, from Gottorp Castle. Augustenborg was another small duchy uh, in the south, uh, south of Denmark. And there were also descendants from the Danish kings. Charlotte Marie, she was a book collector. She married a Glücksburgian and became Duchess of Glücksburg also a small duchy, 
and her brother used the same design as her for, for, for his book collection, uh, replacing her CM with a C and A. And this book was actually, actually bought uh, at an auction as having belonged to Queen Carolina Mathilde, uh, the spouse of Christian VII of Denmark and Norway. And she was also the, the sister of the, um, the, the British king. But it has belonged to Charlotte Marie. You also see here a stamp from inside the book with her initials. And the last example, Friedrich Christian, he was the Duke of Augustenburg. And this is his ex libris. Now we don't have that many uh, uh, items from Augustenburg uh, Castle, which probably has to do or might have to do with, with the, the, um, the disagreement between Denmark and the duchy in the 19th century. This is an example of a, a binding that has several uh, provenances on, on it. Uh, the first we see is uh, on the top, Bolle Luxdorf's elephant with a, a crown in its trunk. He's a book collector in Denmark. We have lots of his books. And below that, uh, uh, the initials for the University Library of Copenhagen, Bibliotheca Universitatis Afniensis. And below that again, Rosenhene uh, uh, coat of arms for, for a Swedish noble family. And then there are also provenances inside of the book. <clears throat> so this is a, an example of a book with several provenances and of the importance of adding one's owner's mark to it. Andrew Sinclair, he was a Scottish nobleman and he came to Denmark in connection with the wedding between Princess Anne of Denmark and James VI of Scotland. And he used this book uh, printed in 1584 as an album amicorum to collect greetings. On the very top here, we see that the handwriting of Queen Sophie, she's written 1589 and uh, her motto, and then she signed it, Sophia Königin zu Dänemarken slash Witwe, telling us that she was a, a widow at the time. Below here, we see uh, Christian IV, her son, and below that again, his son, Ulrich, who also calls himself heir to the Norwegian throne. Now, this book uh, from 1584 is filled with greetings from famous people at the time in Denmark and Norway, including from the astronomer Tycho Brahe, and he signed it at, uh, at his castle Uraniburg at the island of Wien between Denmark and Sweden. Paulus Knibbe, he was a Flemish born diplomat and he escorted Princess Anne from Denmark to Scotland in 1589, but the ship went off course and ended up in Norway instead. So we can see here that Knibbe, he signed this book in Opslovi which is Oslo uh, in late 1589. And then the Scottish King sailed to Norway and the wedding took place just a couple of days uh, later on in Oslo. The son of Andrew Sinclair, Christian Sinclair, he has passed this book on in 1632 to someone. And he wrote it at, uh, he signed it at Sinclair's home, which is a chateau in Scania in Southern Sweden. He might have given it to, to Isla Ulfeldt, and then Lauritz Ulfeldt was the last private owner of, of this book, because with his book collection, this Plutarch came by an auction to the Royal Danish Library in 1662. So this is an example of a book that has traveled far. It has traveled to Norway. It has been to the uh, island of Wien. It has been to Scania, and then back to, to Denmark again. Now, the last example I'll show, I've just called the Royal Danish Library. It's a print from the 18th century uh, to, to the king and the opening of a hospital. It has been owned by Princess Charlotte Amalia, and it has a stamp, which is very rare in our collections, telling us it's a, a uh, duple. And below uh, the stamp, you can read 1786, which is the year 
when uh, this book was sold at, at an auction. Now the book collector P.F. Soom, he signed it here. So he bought this book uh, at an auction from, from the Royal Library. And then for some reason, the Royal Library, Kongli Bibliothek, bought it back at an auction in 1796 again. So this is an example of a book that goes in and out and in of our library. Now the last picture I'll show is the coat of arms of the Klesinski Bibliothek that merged with the University Library of Copenhagen in 1867. Thank you for the attention. Well, Jarle, thank you very much for this interesting uh, lecture and showing us all the provenance marks. It's impressive that with all your work, you collected so many of these marks. And I also think it's very interesting that once a book comes from the stocks and is consulted in the reading room, then these things are registered. At least that's what I understood. And I think it's an amazing example for all other librarians to work with their collection as such. But then of course you need a good system to store everything. So 